forces and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise somebody say the promise of the father which saith he ye have heard of me for John truly baptized you with water but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence and when there we're come together they asked him saying Lord wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times and the seasons for the father which the father had put in his own power but ye shall receive power somebody shall power somebody shall power shall power
before you can jump a battery, you got to be connected. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I came to jump you today.
first saw us, everybody say us, coming out of the worst and going into the better. Tell, tell somebody, say, neighbor, from now on, I will proceed with power. chapter 1. I ain't got time to finish, Maria. But he tells them in Acts 1, verse 8. He says, after you stay here in Jerusalem, because daddy promised you something. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, you got you to learn how to be still on a promise. <laughs> Anytime my daddy say, I'm coming get you, he would say, now you stay right here. And I'm going to come get you. Now, if you move, you might miss what God wants to do. And that's the problem that most of us have. We're so anxious to walk into what God has for us that we literally miss the opportunity that God says, I was going to endow you with an anointing, with power. And the power you have will cause you to be so great that you'll be my witness. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God wants to make you a witness. So one thing we got to understand is that the Holy Spirit is not an it. It's not a something. Even though we say something got a home of Got a hold of me. He said I and my oh. We need to say sorry, say someone got a hold. Oh, me. Oh, yes, it did. I know someone me. objectify the Holy Spirit and push it into a corner of something. There are some things that we can take or leave it. But when you need someone, you need them. I need my wife. I need my children. I need my family. I need my church. But moreover, I need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Tell somebody, say, I need power. I need power. And so the Holy Spirit is uh, 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 two words. The Holy Ghost is two words. Now, we use Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost interchangeably. The Holy Ghost, according to the, New King, with the King James Version, holy comes from the Greek word hagios. Everybody say hagios, which means different or special. Mm -hmm. And the word ghost, come on Bible study, comes from the old English word geist, which means guest. So what the Holy Spirit is, it is a different or a sacred guest. And I came to let you know that in order for a guest to come in, you must invite the guest in. 
Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not going to show up at your house unannounced. But you got to call me on the phone and say, Pastor, I'm having some chicken. And you were on my mind. And I want to know if you and First Lady and the family can come over to my house and eat what I have. And I want you to be my special guest. And that's what we do after we get saved and we confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What we do is we say, Lord, I don't just want you to walk with me, but I'm ready for you to walk in me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, why don't you let him in? Heist up the window and open up the door and let him come on in. When he comes, he comes fully equipped. I came to let you know he comes fully equipped. He comes with power. Somebody shout power. God says after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be endowed with power. Now that word power has two definitions. The first one is asusia, which means authority. The second one is dunamis, which we get the word dynamite, which means explosive. So you have two, a dichotomy of power. You have uh, authority and you have explosive influence. And I decree, declare that if you let the Holy Ghost come in today, you're going to walk out of here with authority and walk out of here with dynamite. Lord have mercy. Look at your neighbor say, I got dynamite power. Come on, touch somebody and say dynamite power. Yeah, I got authoritative power. When I say go, it goes. When I say come, it comes. The reason why you need authority, BJ, is because the enemy tries to creep up in your life. And when you have the authority of the Holy Ghost, you can say, Satan, I command you in the name of the Lord to get out of my home, get out of my mind, get out of my body, get out of my family, get out of my finances. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I got power, authority power. I can leap over walls. I can jump through troops. Somebody say, I got power. But then he says, I'm going to give you dunamos. Uh, explosive dynamite power. Now, if I have authority, then why do I need dynamite power? Because some stuff just needs to be blown up. Yeah. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor. Some stuff you can't replace. Some stuff you can't fix. Some stuff you just got to blow it up. And I believe that there is an explosion. This is the year of kingdom explosion. And the enemy has been trying to tie some things down and keeps his arms and chains and fetters and blockages over it. But I believe today God is going to endow was first lady with dunamis power the kind of power that can blow everything up that the enemy is trying to plant him oh god i dare you to lean on somebody and say neighbor it's about to be a blow up in my life it's about to be an explosion yeah yeah the thing i love about explosion is aunt sally Explosion doesn't just affect the thing being exploded, but anything in proximity of the explosion is going to be affected by the explosion. And I came to let you know you can't be selfish about this kind of power because God wants to explode in you, but he want to leak over into your mama and your daddy and your sister and your brother and your aunties and your uncles and your employer and your employees and your co-workers and your church members. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel a boom in the room. Come on, talk to me. I feel explosion getting ready to happen in your life. I dare you to lean on somebody and say, neighbor. I'm about to blow up now. If you don't want to be affected, you need to get your hands up and go to the other side of the room. But I feel God.
Explosions happen like this. Explosions just don't take place in a corner and leave the other corner alone. So when God gives you power and he blows up in your life, he affects everything in your life. Lord, walk, walk with me, daughter. He affects everything in your life. So, so, so you can't have an excluded explosion. God. So what he does is he explodes on everything in your life. And I just came. I know y'all got to come back next Sunday and let me uh, give you some homiletical and hermeneutical structure. But today I just feel like God wants to tell the folk in Agape International Church this morning that it's your season for power. You've been ran over too long. You've been run amok too long. You've been taken advantage of too long. You've been insulted by the enemy too long. He's had the upper hand on you too long. Don't you know the Bible says that after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall have power. This kind of power comes with peace. This kind of power comes with anointing. This kind of power comes with strength. This kind of power comes with healing. This kind of power comes with increase and income. This kind of power comes with forgiveness. This kind of power comes with reconciliation. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, God has given you power, and I dare you in the name of the Lord to lay your hand on the person beside you and say neighbor, if you saved and sanctified, receiving the power your feet, everybody. It's an outbreak. Tell somebody this kind of outbreak leads to a breakout. Y'all missed it. Tell somebody this kind of outbreak leads to a breakout. When you have power, you're not easily offended. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. When you have power, you can discern the enemy. Lord, somebody in this room, you need better discernment right now. You need to discern what God is and what the enemy is. Because some of your yeses haven't been yes to God. They've been yeses to the enemy. And today in the name of Jesus, lift your hands all over the room today. Today in the name of Jesus, while you're sitting in your room, sitting in your chair, I want you to just open your mouth and begin to say, I receive in the name of Jesus. Now, there's one baptism, but there's many fillings. I said, there's one baptism, but there's many fillings. You get filled over and over and over again. We're going to baptize in water in a few minutes. But God says, Jesus says, John baptized you with water. But there's one coming the comforter, the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. He's going to baptize you with power, with fire. That's what John says. I baptize you with water, but there's one coming that shall baptize you with fire. 
just touch somebody and say, fire, fire, fire. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that they were all in one place. to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Paul went to a church and they were Christians already and Paul asked them, he says have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said we haven't even heard of this Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, and Paul laid hands on them. And he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, now, there's a debate about whether you're supposed to speak in tongues or not. I think you should. I believe you should. People say, can I have the Holy Ghost and not speak in tongues? Well, the, the, the speaking in tongues is a sign of that you have the Holy Ghost, but then there are folk who go around and train folk how to speak in tongues. Some folk just do it to play games, and some folk do it because they've been trained to do it. But the, but, the, but the important thing is, is that you receive the baptism, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. If you want to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, just lift your hands right now. Hallelujah. The Bible says they all began to speak in tongues. Rachel didn't say they all trained them how to speak in tongues. They didn't go through tongue talking class. But if you're born again, you are a candidate to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some of you, when you get baptized today, you're going to come up speaking in tongues. Don't worry about the tongues. Just worry about the gift. Be concerned about the gift. Come on, lift your hands. Bring that up a little bit, son. Bring it up a little bit. Bring it up. Bring it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, these are your people. These are your people. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, That as they are standing here in a submissive posture, that in the name of Jesus, that in the name of Jesus, I command them to receive ye the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Just begin to tell him thank you now. Open your mouth. Tell him thank you. If you receive it, tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Come on. Come on, tell them thank you. 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 Come on, tell them thank you. Tell them thank you. Come on, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive it. 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 Receive the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and we give you praise, and we give you glory, and we give you honor, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Heads bowed, eyes closed.